Good day, grade 11s. Welcome to this next lesson. In this lesson, we're going to actually carry on with trigonometry. We've got two or three, four questions. Four questions on 2D and 3D trig, well, actually 2D trig. And then we are going to move on to finance. So really what we're doing is applications of what we're doing is applications of the trigonometry that we've been covering in the last couple of lessons. So let's look at this first example. These are all old exam paper question examples, okay? All taken out of old grade 11 exam papers. So it says in the diagram, LKN is alpha, KLN is beta, so just that, but there is beta. Um, KL is X meters and MN is perpendicular to LM and so is KL, which means that these lines are parallel, by the way, but that's beside the point. It says show that MN, so they want us to work out something with respect to MN, is equal to X sine alpha cos beta and then sine of alpha plus beta. So do you agree that we need to find a bridge? All the information we've got so far is in this triangle here, okay? It's in K, L, and N triangle. And we need side M, N. So we need to find a bridge to, into that triangle. And the bridge is this line here. So that's the trick when you're doing these questions. You always have to find a bridge, okay? If you can find a bridge, you're sorted. So once we have found the bridge, then we can start working. So we need to somehow get this information to relate to this side, NL, okay? And once we've got that side, we can use maybe our right angle triangle or something like that to get our MN. So let's have a look at it. Um, I have got X, I've got alpha, I've got beta, and I want this side. So do you agree I can say that this is 180 degrees minus alpha plus beta? If this angle is alpha and that angle is beta, then by the angle sum of triangle, this angle, yeah, K N. L is 180 degrees minus those two. So let's write that out. We can say K in L is equal to 180 degrees minus alpha plus beta, and it would be angle sum of triangle. Okay. Right. Now we've just explained that. Now let's look at what we've got. Now we've got this side and an angle. We've got this side, I mean this angle, and do you agree we want that side? So therefore we can use the sign rule. And the sign rule is A over sine A. Actually, let me just correct myself there. It's little a. Okay, it's little a over sine A is equal to little b over sine b. I know it can be written the other way as well. I know it's sine a over a is equal to sine b over b, but we want the side. So therefore we want a at the top. So we're going to have ln. That's what we want. ln over sine of alpha, sine of alpha is equal to b, which in this case is x over sine of 180 minus alpha plus beta. Okay, so do you agree that becomes ln is equal to x sine alpha, I've just taken the sine alpha to the other side, over, and this, do you remember that sine of 180 minus theta is exactly the same as sine theta, exactly the same. Okay, so therefore this is sine of alpha plus beta. But now I need to look at what I need to prove. Do you see that I've got x, I've got sine alpha, I don't have cos beta, but we're working on it, and I have sine of alpha plus beta. Whoop, whoop. So all I need to do is somehow 
relate to this side to all these things and cos beta. Okay, now we agree that this was beta and we also said that these guys were parallel. So do you agree that this is beta as well because they're alternate? Therefore, I can say angle LNM, LNM equals beta. Why? Because they're alternate angles. Okay. And then I can use my sucker toe because I've got a beautiful right angle triangle. If you have a look over here, there's my beautiful right angle triangle. There. Okay. So therefore, do you agree that with respect to beta, this is always the hypotenuse, but this is the adjacent side and that's the side we want. And if we're looking at Sarkachoa, you can see that this is adjacent and this is the hypotenuse. So we're looking at cos. So we can say cos of beta is equal to the adjacent side, which is mn over the hypotenuse, which in this case is ln, ln. But we can therefore say that mn is equal to ln multiplied by cos beta. So I'm just going to write it the other way. I'm not mn is equal to ln cos beta. But what's ln? ln is all this. That's ln. So we can say it's x sine alpha cos beta all over sine of alpha plus beta. And there you go. We did it. Yay. So we've shown that mn is equal to x sine alpha cos beta over sine of alpha plus beta. Right. Excellent. Right. Now I'm going to erase all this writing over here. Guys, if you're watching this live and I'm going to through it too quickly, feel free to message me or or feel free to watch a recording of it. Okay, you get to recording in exactly the same way that you get to the live show. Um, so if you miss something and I erase it, don't panic, just go watch the recording. Okay, so I'm just gonna pause, the, I'm not gonna pause it. I'm gonna mute this while I erase, because that was neat to blow my nose, I'm sorry, I've got a cold. Okay, so I'm back and let's move on now. It says given that alpha is 76 degrees, beta is 72 degrees and x is 48 degrees, I mean 48 meters, calculate the length of mn. So it's actually quite easy because all we have to do is substitute into this formula. So grade 11s, even if you couldn't do this 9.1, you can still do 9.2.1. And therefore, you can still do 9.2.2. So let's do this. So we've got mn is equal to x sine alpha cos beta all over sine of alpha plus beta, right? So now let's substitute in. x is 48 meters. We've got sine of alpha, which is 76 degrees cos of beta, which is 72 degrees, all over sine of your 76 degrees plus your 72 degrees. Okay, so all we need to do now is get out our calculators. Yay! So let's do that. Um, please make sure that your calculators have got that D there and not a radian. If it has an R, then go look at the back of your calculator. There should be a little reset button. Um, if you're using a Casio, it doesn't have reset button, in which case you have to go to mode and you have to go to shift mode um, and shift mode. 
and make sure that you're in your scientific notation or normal, better would be normal, instead of the four, which is radians. Because if it's four, then what's going to happen is going to be an R here. And if you've got an R, then the whole of your trick section is going to be wrong. So please make sure that you rather have it on normal. Um, let's make sure that I got it. And, okay. No, 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 no. Why is it still an R? Okay, shift mode. I want it on a uh, one. No, now I've messed it up. Shift mode. Okay, wait, hang on, let me fix this. Shift mode, and I want it on degrees. Sorry, three. There we go. So it has to be in degrees. Okay, now I don't know what I was doing otherwise. 48, then sign, sign, 76. Close bracket. Cause 72. Close bracket. Equals divided by bracket. No, sorry. Sine bracket of 76 plus 72. Close bracket equals 27.16. 27.16. So the answer is 27.16 meters. So this length here is 27,16 meters. Now it says calculate the area of KLN if LN is 88 meters. Okay, so if you wanted to, you can use a half A, B, sine C, but you also know the area rule is just half base sum's height. And that is a perpendicular height because they gave it to us. So the area is going to be a half times by 88 times by 27,16. Okay, which is just going to be 44 times by 27,16. So let's get this out. So we're going to go 44 multiplied by 27.16 equals 1195.04. 1195.04, so it's 1195,04. And what is it? Square meters. Square meters. Right, excellent. Let's move on. Okay, so again, although you're only supposed to do 2D trig in grade 11 and 3D trig in grade 12, I did find this question on an old exam paper for grade 11. So I'm going to go through it with you. It's not much different, okay? This is a three-dimensional um, problem, but it really isn't much different from a two-dimensional problem. And I'll explain how it works. It says in the diagram below, PQ, is a straight line, 1500 meters long. RS is a vertical tower, which is 158 meters high, with PQS, where was that? PQS being the same horizontal plane. So what I'd like to suggest to you guys is that you actually, whenever you get a horizontal plane, you just very lightly color in and I don't mean spend hours coloring. I just want you guys to help you see what's going on. Make this triangle a different color. Okay, I'm not going to go all the way. I wonder if I can. Okay, um, so you're going to color it in so that you can see that that's the ground effectively. Okay, you don't have to do it in green. I'm just using green because it's lighter than most other colors. Okay, so that's the ground. So there's the vertical pole. This RS is a vertical pole. Hang on a minute. Um, RS is a vert vertical pole. Okay, it's standing up. Okay, and these two things here are ropes. Okay, or angles that you could see to look up at. So it says RS is a vertical tower, 158 meters high, with P, Q, and S on the same horizontal plane. The angle of elevation from R, from P, hang on, of R from P and Q are 25 degrees and theta. Okay, so 25 degrees and theta. So what we're saying is if there's a little dude and he happens to be standing here and then he has to look up from the horizon up to 
R, the top, which is the top of the tower, he looks up at an angle of 25 degrees from the horizontal. And similarly, if there's another little dude standing over here at Q and he looks up to the top of the tower, he looks up at an angle theta. We don't know what that angle is, okay? But on the ground, the angle between S, P, and Q happens to be 30 degrees, okay? So you could think of this as the bottom of the tower. These dudes are looking up to the top of the tower, okay? And the angle between here and the angle between these two dudes is 30 degrees. Now the first thing they ask you to do is determine the length of PS. PS, PS, PS. They've asked you to determine the length of PS. Okay, so we know that this is 30 degrees and we know that that's 1500 meters. I just want to have a look at something. PQ, the straight line, RS is a vertical 158 meters. The angles of elevation of R from PQ and theta equals 30 degrees. Okay, so they want the length of PS. Okay, so do you agree we can use this triangle here? We can use this one. You can see that this is a right angle triangle. There's the 90 degrees, it's a right angle. We've got this side here, which is 158 meters. We've got this angle, which is 25 degrees. Therefore, we can get PS. So we can say in triangle PSR, okay, in triangle PSR, we've got, um, we're going to use Sakatoa. Sakatoa. We've got the opposite side, it's 158 meters, and we want the adjacent. So we're going to use tan theta. Okay, we're going to use tan theta. So we're going to say tan of 25 degrees is equal to the opposite side, which is 158 over the side we want, which is PS. Then we can swap, okay, so we can go PS is equal to 158 over tan 25. What did I do? Let me show you slowly. I went, okay, let's write it up here. Tan 25 is equal to 158 over PS, right? So let's multiply both sides by PS to get rid of the PS on this side. So now we've got 158 is equal to PS tan 25, but now we want PS by itself, so what do we do? We divide both sides by tan 25, so it's times by 1 over tan 25. These cancel, and you end up with PS is equal to 158 over tan 25, and now we need a calculator. So we go 158 divided by tan 25 close bracket equals and it's 338.83 comma 83 and it's meters always check the units the length is meters so this length here is 338 comma 38 okay done now they want the length of s Q, S, Q. Okay, so let's think about that. Um, and I need to blow my nose again. I'm so sorry. Just hang on a second. Sorry. Right, sorry about that, I'm back. Okay, now we want the length of SQ. Do you agree we can use either Pythagoras or trig to find the length of SQ? Um, we know that this is 90 degrees, we know that's 90 degrees. I just want to check something. In the diagram, PQ is a straight line. Okay, 1,500 meters long. RS is a vertical tower. Um, Q and S are in the same horizontal plane. The angles of elevation are R and SPQ is 3 degrees. Okay, 
you know what worries me and what I think they're meant to do, they're meant to tell us, because it looks like it, they're meant to tell us that this is 90 degrees. We don't have any other information, enough information otherwise to work out what this SQ is. Because if that's not 90 degrees, we don't know what that angle is. We don't know what that angle is. We can't work out that. Actually, we can. We can use the cos rule. I take it back. We can use the cos rule. So let's use the cos rule. Uh, first of all, let's erase. Oh, sorry. I just read out, sorry. Um, let's erase all of this. And let's go find out the length of SQ using the cos rule. Okay, so the cos rule says the following. It says A squared is equal to B squared plus C squared minus 2BC cos A. In other words, if you've got two sides in an enclosed angle, you can find the length of the third side, which is exactly what we're going to do now. So we're going to say SQ squared is equal to SP squared plus PQ squared minus 2 times SQ, sorry, SP times PQ cos of 30 degrees. Okay, so now all we have to do is plug in the numbers and then put it into our calculator. So you got SQ squared is equal to SP squared, which is 338,38 all squared plus PQ squared, which is 1500 all squared, minus 2 times SP, which is 338,38, multiplied by PQ, which is 1500 cos 30. And now we just need to pop that in our calculator. So let's get our calculators out and clear it. And we're going to go 338.38 squared plus 1500 or squared minus bracket 2 times times 338.38 multiplied by 1500 whoops that's a thousand multiplied by cos 30, and I'm pretty sure I need another bracket, equals, here we go. But now this needs to be square rooted because this is equal to SQ squared. So we're going to square root the answer and we get 1218.76 because this 5 means that we round up the second digit. So 1218.76 is 1218,76. Let's write that in. 1218,76. Okay, so now we've determined the length of SQ. Now they say, hence, find the value of theta. Okay, and now we can work in this triangle. We can work in this triangle here. Because we have got the opposite side and we've got the adjacent side. So again, we can use tan theta and we can find the size of angle theta. So we can say tan theta is equal to the opposite, which is 158, over the adjacent, which is 1218,76. So therefore, theta is what? It's equal to second function tan. So theta is equal to, let's clear this, it's shift tan of 158 all over 1218.76 close bracket equals 7,39 degrees. So theta is very small. It's 7,39 7, degrees. Sure. Okay. Now it is finally determine the area of triangle SBQ. So they want the area of this. Okay. So now, do you agree that the area rule was what? It was a half AB 
sine C. Let me just erase all this. The area rule was a half AB sine C. So let's just find the pen. A half AB sine C. In other words, if we had a triangle that went A, B, C, this would be little b, this would be little a, this, sorry, C, this would be little a, and you use these two sides and the enclosed angle to find the area, which means that since we have 30 degrees, we're going to use this side, this side, and the enclosed angle of 30 degrees to work out the area. So it's equal to a half times our side a, which is 338,38, times the sine b, which is 1500, sine of 30 degrees. Okay, so let's pop that into our calculator. And we have got 0.5 multiplied by 338.38 multiplied by 1500 multiplied by sine of 30 close bracket, close bracket equals Oh, I put too many brackets in it, I think. Yeah. Let's go back one. Equals, there we go. So that's, oh, okay. That is 126,892.5. 126,892, 126,892, comma 5 meters squared. Please make sure you use the same units that they've given you over there. Right, let's do another example. Okay, it says in triangle PQR, PQR. P is 132 degrees, PQ is 27.2, and QR is 73.2. Calculate the angle of size R. Okay, so that one is pretty obvious that it's the sine rule because we're going to say sine r over 27.2 is going to equal sine 132 over 73.2. So therefore, do you agree that sine r is equal to 27 comma 2 sine 132 all over 73 comma 2. So we need a calculator again. Hang on a minute. So we go, let's work this out. We're going to clear this and we're going to go 27.2. Actually, do you agree that we can actually make this eat? Um, okay, let's do it's two steps. So we're going to go 27.2 multiplied by sine. 132 equals divided by 73.2 equals and now that is sine r so to find actual r what we have to do is go shift sine of the answer close bracket equals and that's 16.03 so angle of r is actually 16 comma 03 degrees okay that is 16 comma 03 degrees now it says calculate the area of triangle pqr again what do we want we want a half a b sine c so we've got two sides we've got this side here and we've got this side here so in order to find out what the area is, we have to work out what the size of that angle is, which is not that difficult to do because we've got 132 and we've got 16.03. So do you agree that we can just go that angle Q, P, Q, R, is equal to 180 degrees minus 132 plus 16 comma 03. So that's 180 minus bracket 132 plus 
0.03 close bracket equals and that's 31,97. So that's 31,97 degrees. And now we can substitute into the area rule, uh, which is area is equal to half times by the one side, which is 27,2 times by the other side, which is 73,2 multiplied by sine of 31,97. So let's get out our calculators. So we've got 0 0.5 multiplied by 27.2, 0 0.2 multiplied by 73.2 multiplied by sine of 31.97 close bracket equals 527.1. Five hundred twenty-seven, five hundred twenty-seven point one centimeters squared. Okay, not too bad, eh? Right, last example, and again, I need to blow my nose. My apologies. Right, so let's look at this example. And again, it's trick. It's my last trick example. And then we're going to move on to finance. I don't know if we're going to have time to do that today. We're going to try. Okay, it says in the figure SP, SPQ, SPQ, this angle is A, PQS, PQS is B, this angle here is B, and this is H. Okay, and I tell you that these lines are perpendicular, so therefore we know that they are parallel again. It says determine the distance SQ in terms of A, B, and H. Okay, so now they want SQ in terms of A, B, and H. Okay, so do you agree that this angle here is 180 degrees minus A plus B? Okay, so now we've got all three angles and we have this side here. Do you agree we can use the sine rule to get SQ? Okay, we could say SQ over sine A, sine A is equal to H over sine of 180 minus a plus b. So now I'm solving for sq. So therefore I'm going to say sq is equal to h sine a all over and again sine of 180 minus theta is just sine theta, right? So this is going to be, sorry, that this bit here is going to be sine of A plus B, to, A plus B. Okay, so that's it. SQ is equal to H sine A over sine A plus B. Awesome. Now it says, hence show that RS, RS, RS is equal to H sine A cos b over sine a plus b. Okay, so we've seen a question like this before. In fact, we saw today. Let's just go up. Wrong way. Um, there it was. It was almost identical. It's just the wrong way around. Okay, I mean, not a wrong way around, different way around. So, therefore, since they told us that this line here, RS, is parallel with PQ, do you agree that that angle there is B? Okay, because they're all turn its angles okay therefore in this triangle here we can say using saw toa we can say that we've got this side and we want this side right so we can say cos b is equal to the adjacent side which is sr 
over the hypotenuse, which is SQ. Therefore, we can say that SR is equal to SQ cos B. But SQ is this stuff, so you can say SQ is H sine alpha, sorry, A, cos B over sine of A plus B. There we go, H, H, sine A, sine A, cos B, cos B, sine of A plus B. Yay! There you go. Okay, so now let's talk finance. Okay, so you know that you should know a couple of things from last year's finance. You should know simple interest. It's actually a really easy formula. A is equal to P times by 1 plus IN, where P, A is the amount of money, either the amount of money that you'll have to pay back or the amount of money that you'll get out after the period. Okay, P is the principal. This is the amount of money you loan or the amount of money that you invest. I is your interest rate and it's in decimal form. And N is your number of years. Right, so let's do an example. So I'm not going to do tons of examples with simple interest because it's a fairly easy question. I mean, section um, 1 plus I N. Okay, obviously, with the other ones that are slightly more complex, we'll do a couple of examples. It says John invests 45,000 Rand for five years. Adam Bank offers a savings account with a simple interest for 13.5% per annum. What would John's new balance be after five years? Okay, so grade 11 is actually a pretty easy question. Remember that I always say, write down all your variables, fill them in, and then use your formula. So they say he invests 45,000. So that's the principle. For five years, it says offers the savings comes with simple interest of 13.5%. So it's 0.135. What would John's new balance be after five years? So we are looking for how much he would get out after five years. So we just have to substitute in. So you've got A is equal to P, 1 plus I N. P is the principal, which is 45,000 times by 1 plus i, which is 0, 0,135, oh sorry, okay, to the power, times by 5, okay, so now all we need is a calculator, so we can work this out, so let's do the brackets first, it's going to be 0, 0.135 multiplied by 5 plus 1, oh, what happened, let's try again, um, 1 plus bracket 0.135 multiplied by 5 close bracket no, let's try again multiplied by 5 close bracket equals and then we're multiplying it by 45,000 multiplied by 45 1 2 3 equals 75,375 75,375. So that is what John's new balance would be after five years. Okay, which is not too bad, hey? Right, compound interest. So again, the compound interest formula is going to be given to you. A is equal to P, 1 plus I to the again. Again, A is the amount, P is the principal, I is the interest in decimal form, and N is the number of years. Grade 11s, you guys should know this. You should have done it ad nauseum in grade 10, and you should have done this already a bit in grade 11, which is why I'm not taking too much time over it. I'm going to do one example of this, and then we're going to call it a day. Then on Wednesday, we will continue with finance and then work on to the grade 11 finance curriculum. It says John invests 45,000 Rand for five years. Adam Bank, Adam's Bank offers a savings account with a compound interest of 13.5% per annum. What would John's new balance be after five years? Okay, so the formula is A is equal to P, 1 plus I to the power of N. The A is the amount of money we want to know. P is the principal, which is 45,000. I is 13.5%, which we divide by 100, so it's 0, 135, and N is 5 years. Okay, so do you agree it's 45 
thousand. 1 plus 0, 0,135 all to the power of 5. So we can multiply this in using our calculators. So it's 1 plus 0, 0.135 equals all to the power of 5 equals uh, multiplied by 45123 equals 84,760 and 17 cents. 84,760 and 17 cents. That's not a bad return on your investment, I must admit, after five years. Right, grade 11. I hope that you've learned a bit more about your 2D trick. I hope too that you've learned a little bit about your, or just have now remember a bit about your simple interest and compound interest. Please join me again on Wednesday when we'll work through more of your compound interest and simple interest and interesting things that happen in grade 11 finance. Have a great day.